Hi. I hope you're doing okay today. I am getting ready to go to Nashville for the evening um, to visit some friends. But I thought before I go, I would share this story with you that I mentioned in one of my recent videos. Um, this story, I wrote this for an assignment in my writing class. And I only started writing short stories last semester. So I'm a little nervous. This is all still kind of new to me, but I figured I would just go for it. And um, if you have any advice, then uh, I would love to hear it. Any comments you have on it. But overall, I just hope that it's relaxing for you. So we'll go ahead and get started. The name of the short story is Magnolia. Not many people know about Magnolia. I come out here a lot during the summer. I remember my mom telling me that she was baptized here in this creek when she was a young adult, which kind of made it a special place for me. Peaceful. At times I wish I could live here. Wade out into the cool green and brown water every day and swim over to the collapsed bridge. It's grown into the earth now, and acts as a ramp up to the bank where the rope swing is tied. It still gives me butterflies to climb into the tree with the rope in my hand, and stand there with one foot in the loop, knowing that if I don't throw my weight off the edge and make my other foot slide from its grip on the bark, I'll regret not jumping in. I squeak off my water shoes, slip the loop of the rope around my wrist, and carefully climb up onto the branches. Standing here, building up the nerves once again, I pause to realize that it'll only be another hour or so till sunset. I carefully place my foot in the loop, and the last thing I hear before I'm submerged and my toes touch the mud and sand at the bottom of the creek is the rustle of the leaves above my head and the creaking of the rope, tensing as it carries me to the water. Now everything sounds slow and muffled. I don't push off the bottom right away. I just breathe out and let my weight hold me under. I open my eyes and see the cloud of dirt that my feet stirred up and the millions of bubbles racing toward the crystal ceiling above me. I think for a moment that I'm watching the butterflies that were just in my stomach escape from my mouth. I decide that now I might as well follow the bubbles. But before I can swim back up through the water, I notice a silver glimmer a little ways in front of me, and a quiet voice echoes through the water. Don't go yet. The glimmer sways back and forth as it slowly comes closer to my face. There's something I want to show you. After taking a moment to contemplate whether or not I will follow, I nod, and my hair floats around my head following my movements. I recognize a little fish from when I was skipping rocks one morning. It swam around my feet and would bump its nose against smooth, flat rocks that were perfect for skipping. Now it's leading me somewhere. Its mouth doesn't move, but I can hear what it wants to say to me. It leads me downstream to the deepest part of the creek. I don't have any problems breathing. I'm fine in the water, just as I am above it. Where are we going? I ask, steadily kicking my feet and pushing my way through the water. To the lights. Lights? What sort of lights? The northern lights. The northern lights, in this creek. See for yourself. The quiet creature in front of me, the quiet creature stops in front of me and looks over the edge of a drop-off into the deepest part of the creek. I swim closer to look, and there, illuminating the water, are the northern lights. Bright beams of purple, green, blue, and yellow rise and fall, the colors changing and swelling, captivating as I always imagined them. I stare at what I almost believe to be the sky, my eyes reflecting the vibrant colors. But I... how? I look over to try and get some sort of explanation for these lights from the fish, but it was nowhere in sight. 
I no longer hear its gentle voice or see its glimmering scales beside me. I remember that it must be getting dark and that I need to start making my way back. I try my best to memorize the lights before I leave. I swim back to the bank with the rope swing and the collapsed bridge and breathe in the air when I finally reach the top of the water. I can only hope that it's real and that the lights will be here tomorrow too. I climb the ramp and pick up my shoes that I left by the tree. I look out over the creek and think to myself, real or not, I would have regretted not jumping in. So that's my story. Um, it's kind of far-fetched and a strange idea to see the northern lights in a creek. But, uh, there it is. So, I hope you enjoyed it, and, um, feel free to give me any feedback. Um, I won't be offended if you say, that's terrible, please don't use this story for anything, ever. <laughs> I won't be offended, but I'll probably still use it for something at some point. Maybe. We'll see how I feel about it later on. Um, so... Now that that's done, I thought I would do a little bit of touching the microphones and um, not talk for a little while, just so you can relax and enjoy the